I can give you direction. That doesn't mean you're gonna make money, understand that. I could come on here every week and say, guys, you know, euro dollar long, uh, New Zealand CAD long, you know, pound dollar short, for example. I could give you that. Will you still make money? Probably not. So it doesn't matter if I tell you this is going from here to here, right? You still need to know how to actually trade it. There's so many variables to that. This is why you need to invest into your education, regardless of whether you join Falcon or not. You need to have a good, solid education to understand these things. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode on the Falcon YouTube channel. So I hope you've been enjoying the content. This week, I wanted to do a technical one. So this week, we're going to be doing why support and resistance is holding you back part two. The first part, if you haven't checked it out already, I highly recommend that you do. And we got so many questions after that, you know, and I know why, because I know what it feels like to feel like you see these big moves happen and you're not involved in them, and you don't really have a criteria to get involved in them, and you just feel like you're gambling if you're just jumping into trade. So I get it. You wanna know how to do that. Well, the first part, I just gave you a general overview just to see that, you know, give you a bit of perspective actually on how we look at the markets. In this episode, I wanna go into a lot more detail. So I'm gonna be covering the DXY and pound dollar and just show you more of a side-by-side -side comparison from a figures point of view and from a percentage point of view why I believe it's holding people back. Can people make money trading support and resistance and things like that? Of course they can. I actually know people that do. But can you maximize your profit more by understanding these concepts? Well, you can see for yourself. Let's get into it. Hey guys, so I just want to jump into the charts. I'm going to start off with the DXY. What I want to do first actually is just play you a quick clip of what I was looking at beforehand so you can understand the thought process with things like support and resistance. And it works nicely with what is happening with the DXY at the moment. I feel like a lot of people could so easily get caught on the wrong side of the market purely because of their bias based off of support and resistance. Now in the market, you need to understand the probabilities and the possibilities. That'll be the best way to keep you neutral so then you can capitalize either way. You can see previously here, even with the DXY, that what I was looking at with this screenshot just shows you the thought process, but we'll dig into it on the charts. But firstly, I wanna show you a clip before that happened. Firstly, starting off with the DXY and taking a look at this structure. So very, very clean as you can see. Let's actually start off on the weekly chart. So from the weekly perspective, it's so easy to get caught up into these higher time frames, not realizing that the daily chart is probably one of my most favorite time frames because it really does show you a cleaner picture. But of course, the higher time frame is naturally going to give you the long term picture. In this sense, it's just consolidation. So what we're really focusing on is that part of that pattern. So if you joined us recently, you might have trend lines from different places. But what we're really interested in is this section, as you can see, for weeks and weeks and weeks on the weekly, it doesn't really look like much when we go down to the daily. Now we have a clean pattern, so it becomes a lot clearer. So I really want us to pay attention to what's happening within this structure. As you can see now, within that expanding, very, very clear. And what do we have within it? This is what I was talking about in the update and talking about in the midweek. We have the impulse correction continuation. So this is giving us the start of a completion of a pattern. This is what you call a very, very clean pattern. And what I love about this one is that if we just measure this impulse, even just roughly here from the break, or at the start of this pattern, as you can see, it lines up nicely with the expanding. So this is impulse correction continuation at this stage. The variable is that there's some double top type action here, but there's a lot of momentum here. And you can see structurally, we're following this impulse correction continuation. So I'd be very, very surprised if this was to drop out. It can happen, but very unlikely. So I'm expecting this to continue to the upside, create that third touch with the one, two, three. And then what do we have? We have an ascending channel within the pattern. We have the expanding for this to top out and then drop. And then we have the one, two, three. So very, very clean structure. This is why there are some big, big trades coming. I say this only when I really can see the picture. I'm not saying it because it sounds good. I'm saying it because the market is telling me right now that we are approaching some of the biggest moves. Like I said in December, when we was approaching towards the end of the year, there's bigger trades coming. December was massive. And then guess what? January followed that. I can see towards the last part of this month and then following on, 
it's going to be pretty crazy. So now it's time for us to really get focused. So from a dick's wife. Right, guys. So as you can see in the previous clip, you see the thought process there, understanding what is the possible, what is the probable. Now, what I've got here is the chart, which looks a lot messier. Now, not everybody that trades support and resistance will trade this way, but I just kind of generalize it with things like the the 50 EMA, 20 EMA, and we've got some MACD here as well, and just a few put bits of support and resistance. Of course, you've seen much messier charts, but we'll just start off with this and we'll kind of break this down so you can see that. So as you can see on the weekly chart, we've got the DXY here. A really important lesson right now because the DXY is in such a valuable area, it's important for you to understand what's coming next. What's the possible, what's the probable? Well, let's see. Well, as you can see here, this is on the weekly chart, right? We're just in this correction. It's just been moving up sideways and we've got these levels. So, you know, 97.5 roughly, people are seeing that as a big resistance. They're looking back. Let's go to the daily where it's a lot clearer. So if we go to the daily chart, it's, it's this part here. Forget about MACD for now. Let's just focus on this. We've got one, two, three, you know, I can't argue with that. One touch, two touch, three touch. Could we get the fourth touch? Possibly. But what's happened is that people are looking at this and they're, they're reacting based off of this breaking, where what we're actually looking at is that we're looking at the patterns, we're looking at patterns that repeat themselves, and what we're actually doing is predicting it before it happens. So ask yourself, what would you rather do and what kind of trader would you rather be? Would you rather be someone that reacts to something and then make a decision, or would you rather predict it before it happens based off of patterns that consistently repeat themselves from years and years of data? This is what we're focusing on, and this is no coincidence of why this has moved up and come back down. I think a lot of people would be looking at this like this and expecting, well, this could be an area of resistance if you like, and rightfully so, I understand it. I'm not saying it can't reject because it has previously. One, two, three, looking for the fourth one. And let's say we go through here, you might see a bit of rejection, maybe on the lower time frames there, and then it breaks through, right? This is a shock to some people. So what they're expecting, is this a pretty convincing break? I would agree so. So if we're expecting a break up, maybe a move back down, a retest, resistance now becomes support. This is the mindset that people are in, and then a move to the upside. See, this is the difference of what we're looking at within Falcon. We're expecting this to break and to come back down, which you can see in the previous video, right? We don't have a crystal ball. We're just following where people get caught on the wrong side of the market, which is, is where I think it is. And when we're looking at this, we go one step further, and we can see how that plays out. So it moves up, straight back into the pattern. So isn't it a coincidence that one, two, three, four, moves back up and it breaks back lower? Wouldn't you have, reje wouldn't you have expected a rejection there? Or is it now you're using the excuse that, you know, well, there's an EMA there, so I'm expecting a rejection here. I'm not saying that it can't move back to the upside because it's understanding the possible and the probable. But what is fundamentally important is that you understand that there is a 10% chance that this is moving to the upside now. 10% chance, based off of the pattern, based off of the structure. So what would you rather be trading? What has a 90% probability of playing out or a 10% probability of playing out? That's the difference there. And this really comes down to just looking at the basics of, this was a very basic pattern here, just an impulse correction continuation. This was just a bull flag. There was no, I didn't invent bull flags. These have been around for years. You just need to understand where they are. So this is how we anticipate it. And that's the kind of trader I know I wanted to be when I was you know, learning more about patterns. And of course, we look at patterns in a unique way, but looking at the basic structure of just impulse correction continuation, it broke above and guess what? It broke back down. Why? Was that just because it failed to break above and things like that? This broke back down because this was just a very basic pattern. So let's take a look at it, break it down to look a lot clearer. So now what you can see this is just a clean ascending channel, one, two, three. And what does it have? It has this middle section. So a tiny little lesson is this. If we just take an ascending channel, Falcon community, we know exactly what I'm talking about. This is just to give you a rough overview. You're not gonna learn the strategy just from a little clip like this. There's, there's so much more to it, but just to give you a general overview, if you have a move up, a clean pattern like this will have three touches. Of course, it enters like this, you've got your first point. In the middle, you'll have a continuation pattern like so, which will be the correction. Then you'll have a move up and you'll have the third touch. This is a clean pattern. This is a clean pattern. One, two, three, it has the three sections and then it's gonna play out to the downside and we'll be targeting this low as a minimum. What can you see here? One, two, three. What does it have in the middle? The correction that I was talking about in the previous clip. What have we done? We've played out, we've superseded that. So the impulse correction continuation and we've rejected. So this is not a coincidence, we're not shocked. And I think what happens when you're trading things like support and resistance, you're putting so much significance of this 
and you're thinking, well, you know, wow, I didn't expect it to break. Well, there's the difference. We did expect it to break and you can see that. And it's not because we're, you know, we have a crystal ball or anything like that. We're just looking at basic pattern structure and market behavior. And these are patterns that repeat themselves. And I would much rather focus on that, especially when you think about account, account scale. Let's take it one step further. Let me ask you, if you're trading this way, support and resistance, things like that, now you get given a million pounds. Are you confident trading that way? Do you have clarity? Are you gonna trade that way? Highly unlikely, and I see it time and time again, and I've been there, and that's why I knew that I was dedicated to become the best trader I could be, and there was more understanding than that. There was these pullbacks that never happened, and I would constantly pick direction, and I wouldn't be in the trade. And that left me feeling a bit frustrated, which I'm sure a lot of you can resonate with. And let me know in the comments if you do feel like that, you know, because I know it's a frustrating feeling, but there is another way, and we've seen that, and that's why the community is capitalizing on these moves. So as you can see, very simple price action there, and even just going out to the weekly, this already looks so messy, looking at this, you know? If you're a Falcon member watching this, it probably give you a bit of a headache, but you know, a lot of people do trade this way and you know, some people find clarity in the chaos, but at the same time, it doesn't need to be like that. And that's why I want to construct to you very quickly, this simple structure of what we're actually looking at. So let's clean that up. We don't need MACD on there for now. And we're going to draw just a simple channel that we have. We're going to remove that support. We're gonna hide, firstly, we'll hide the 20, right? We'll clean it up, looks a little bit clearer right now. Well, clearly this wasn't that significant because we broke above and we completely retraced, especially if we end like this on the weekly, guys and girls, that so this is coming down. I can give you direction. That doesn't mean you're gonna make money, understand that. I could come in here every week and say, guys, you know, euro dollar long, uh, New Zealand CAD long, you know, pound dollar short, for example. I could give you that, will you still make money? Probably not. So it doesn't matter if I tell you this is going from here to here, right? You still need to know how to actually trade it. There's so many variables to that. This is why you need to invest into your education, regardless of whether you join Falcon or not. You need to have a good, solid education to understand these things. So as you can see, simple channel. Now let's get rid of, well, firstly, let's get rid of the resistance because it wasn't relevant. And now we can get rid of the 50. Now, what are we left with? We're left with a very clean channel. And as you can see, not so important now. Let's go back to the daily. So if we go to the daily chart. Now ask yourself, is that not much cleaner to look at? Now when we look at that, that's where that resistance was. Just very quickly pop that back on. This even looks cleaner. Even if you was to incorporate you know, basic price structure and getting rid of indicators, already we're getting a bit cleaner. Now let's draw through it. We can see the pattern. Three touches. As I, as I outlined previously, we're just breaking that at the moment, which is really, really important right now, actually. And we also had the potential for this expanding formation, right? So, so we had a few variables. So we were either gonna to move to the expanding or we was going to reject off of this outer structure at the top or the one, two, three ascending channel, break the high, get people caught on the wrong side of the market, people thinking that this is a break of resistance and a retest to go long, not at all. This is just very clean price structure and this is how people get caught on the wrong side of the market. And there's so many big moves coming. We're stepping into the impulsive phase. The last thing you wanna be doing as a trader is constantly being caught on the wrong side of the market and not understanding why. All these big moves happening with no pullbacks and you're not involved in them, right? Because you're gonna be very, very frustrated, revenge trade, jump in too late, jump in too early and constantly get hurt. And this is how people blow their accounts because they see these big moves happen without them, then they just start taking silly trades with no real strategy. So looking at it like that, we removed that, very clean structure, and what are we expecting this to move down? Just like I said, can this move back up like this? Of course, because we haven't tested the outer structure. So the variable is that we know that one, two, we could still head up here and then still drop. So until this structure has been broken and a few other variables, but you don't have to understand the full strategy to know how to deal with that. But until this breaks above and closes above and gives us a few other things like a correction that we'd need to see, this hasn't changed. So this doesn't matter if this goes back up once more. We're still looking for a sell. Our bias doesn't change. The only time that does is when we break above this structure. So we know, right, something's changed. We take a message from the market, then we wait for a continuation and then we take it long. That's how you need to be trading. You need to know how to pivot. You need to know when something's changing, not forcing your bias on, this is the resistance I'm expecting. Now it's breaking. Now I'm gonna look for a retest and we're gonna go long. That's very basic. You owe it to yourself to invest more into your education. Think about it like this. Think about it from a broker perspective. Where do you think your broker as a whole, I'm not gonna to get too much into it, but where do you think 
they, they know where you put in your stops are, right? You just have to type in on YouTube, Forex for Beginners, what's gonna come up, support and resistance. Well, guess what? They know where the majority of people put in their stops and where they're buying, where they're selling, etc. Because this is where people like to, resistance, resistance, resistance. What happens? People were selling there, break straight through, come straight back in. How do we anticipate it? The pattern. It's the pattern that we're expecting it. So these are just key little things, you know, hopefully it makes you a little bit more curious to understand that. But from that perspective, this is looking very simple and we have a few other variables as well. There's something that we've, we've got in Falcon called a running channel. So how we would expect this to move to the upside. In order for this to move to the upside and completely break out, even then we still wouldn't be shocked it happening because it would give us an indication ahead of time. So what you would see, you're not gonna fully understand this, but you'd see something like this, which would be a running channel. And that would be the momentum that could give it a break to the upside. So this is what we're focusing on the DXY. We're keeping that as simple as possible. I hope that tiny little lesson on the DXY gave you a bit of perspective. Reason being, if this starts to drop everyone, for all of you on YouTube, if this starts to drop heavily out, then you're gonna see some huge moves on some currency pairs, especially dollar related, of course. You're gonna see Kiwi dollar move explode to the upside structurally, Aussie dollar to the upside. You're gonna see dollar CAD for a huge sell. You're gonna see dollar yen for a huge sell. There's so much opportunity on the cards right now. This is why I'm making this video, to educate you all. Whether you join Falcon or not, just so you understand this big moves coming and just this basic concept can save you so much money, time, frustration, and headaches. So I hope that helped on the DXY alone because you know that little segment, what I've just given you there, took me years and years and years to learn. So I hope it brought you a lot of value and let me know if it did in the comments. So that's the DXY. Keep an eye out for that. Now I've given you that piece and you can always refer back to this in the weeks to come. And what I wanna do now, let's jump to pound dollar so I can show you side by side from a you know support and resistance EMA typical style of the difference of percentages of how you could get in versus you know the difference of percentages, you know, what you can make and the differences and why we trade the way that we do. So let's get into that now. Right guys, so I hope you enjoyed that part on the DXY and that made a lot of sense. I know it's gonna open up a lot of people's eyes because you would have never looked at the market that way. I'm just gonna jump into pound dollar so you can see side by side the differences in trades. Let's take a look. So starting off pound dollar on the weekly here. Again, just keeping it very typical with support and resistance. MACD, a few EMAs, etc. Nothing too crazy, we haven't even added it in the FIB. But as you can see from this perspective here, what we're gonna be looking at is this section here. We're gonna be looking at this section here, right? So if we look at it from this perspective, let's ig actually ignore the rest of this. Let's remove this off and just look at this section because this is more than enough to show you what I mean. So if you look at it from here, I mean, we can all agree this is an area of resistance that you guys and girls will be looking at, especially if you trade support and resistance, right? So one, two there, looking for selling opportunities. If we go down to the daily chart, so if we look on the daily chart, you can see we've got resistance there, you've got support here, support here, that would make sense. If we go back, there's probably areas that you would have in for that reason. But the most important thing is that you would see this as a significant point of resistance. And then you've got your next line of support here and you've got the EMAs, et cetera. And this is the next part here. So how would you kind of shape this up? Well, firstly, we're expecting this. You can see from our old webinars as well, we've been expecting this for a big sell for a long time to come all the way to the downside and potentially even tag these lows, right? But a minimum fill 90% of the channel, which I believe it's already done now. So as you can see, this is just one big corrective structure. So we expected a big break, not just a little break. And this is what people do. The reason why I say it holds you back is because it doesn't stop you. It doesn't mean you can't get into trades because sometimes some great trades literally reject at a top of a resistance and they work out really well. But if you knew more information and knowledge is power when you understand this, that this had the ability to go down to these areas here, could you hold trades for longer? Could you capitalize more? And at the end of the day, you're a trader to make money, you know, not to have an ego, that's the different thing. This is not about saying that uh, we're right, we're wrong, or they're wrong, or we're all of that kind of stuff. It's more to point out, this is what's happening in the market time and time again. This is why we hit these returns. Do you wanna be involved in that? Literally, straight down the line, as simple as that. You're a trader, you wanna make money, I get it. And I wanna help as many people there as possible utilizing this style. So as you can see there, momentum. I'm sure we could all agree that this is quite impulsive, right? It's not, it's not decelerated, it hasn't slowed down in those kind of terms. You wouldn't be expecting anything just yet. You'd probably wait for a rejection at least, right? So 
maybe this. You could say from a swing perspective, you could probably put this trade on like so and look for a sell setup. You know, pretty wide stop in that respect, but even if you looked at it from a swing perspective and you targeted the daily 50, right? Targeting down here, 2.5%, nothing too crazy. But again, you could see that from a swing perspective. Let's go one step further. So we reject back down. This is where normally if people are thinking, well, do I wanna trade through the EMAs? Let's actually just remove the 20 because you know that's relevant to some people. Let's keep it a little bit cleaner. You know, I don't want this to look like I'm, I'm uh, bashing or anything like that. That's actually the complete opposite to what I'm doing because I made it very clear. This is not that it cannot work for you, but what is very, very true, it does hold people back because people would be closing these trades down very early. I can I can almost imagine from this type of style, you probably would have made anywhere between seven to 10% being very generous on this whole move, where you're gonna see the difference of what a Falcon trade looks like. So looking at it from this perspective, we've now got a rejection, probably looking for some pullbacks on the, on the intradays and then looking for some trades to the downside. So if we go now to the one hour and go back to that piece and take a look, so on the one hour time frame, this is where it all happens. So if we've got our move to the downside here, what are we expecting? Well, you've got the breakdown. Would you take a trade from here? Probably not. You're probably waiting for a rejection. And now you've got this trade here. Why? Because it's now breaking the one hour 50 and then we're rejecting and consolidating here. So you probably take that for a trade there, right? So let's say, for example, you size that up. You've got trade here you stop just above here maybe 35 40 to be generous right you might even have something else in there but just keeping it as clean as possible and when you're looking at it from here let's say you target this next level of support it makes sense especially if it starts slowing down there as well and you've got let's say 7.5 pretty decent you'd argue that's a great trade it's not that you can't make these percentages that's the thing and you know let's go a little bit more aggressive let's say you got in with a 35 pip stop you know, 8.6, that's good. What you need to realize is that it's not the good trade, it's that if this is your maximum capacity, if this is you hitting your one big wonder trade, that you've been waiting, 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 and then you go from a streak of losses, you're gonna then start to be fearful because you feel like you've undone your hard work. Let's say you held it for a little bit longer and it broke back through. Eventually, you'd probably be tracking this, this one hour 50 EMA, and as it broke back down, as soon as that broke above, you'd probably close it. So let's say you did hold it and you ended up with 9% or 9.2, arguably. Would you hold it all the way down to here? And be honest with yourself. Would you hold it down here? If the answer is no, and would you hold it to here? Let's say even more so. Would you hold it to here for 16.3? Well, I could tell you that same trade would have banked you about 16%, right? If you understood what I'm gonna teach you next. So looking at it from that perspective, you can see why I feel like it holds people back. I'm not saying you can't make money. You can make 8.5% there. And this is not about being greedy. This is about where well, the market's gonna go there anyway. Why wouldn't you wanna bank more percentage? That's the difference there. So that's it. you can see the first trade. So that's what you can look at here. Now let's take a look at the channel of what's in here that you definitely won't be looking at and why we looked at the trade. So from the DXY, what did you learn? You learned that with a clean structure, you have an ascending channel and you have three points. So point one, point two, the middle part has a correction. And then we have the move up for the third touch. And then we get a sell off and we're targeting the low. That's what you learned in the DXY clip, right? And if you haven't, definitely go check that out at the beginning of the clip. So there's a very valuable lesson there and that alone will help you so much in your trading. Just that one key bit of lesson. So knowing that, let's break this down and let's just hide the 50 for a moment so you can see that. And we look at this section, let's go to the four hour and make it even clearer. So on the four hour chart, I just showed you that channel. What do we have here? So very similar to the DXY, we have to the T, this channel here, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. And we have 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. So here, you can see that we have one, two, three. We have our middle section, which is our continuation, impulse, correction, continuation, and our third touch. So you see how I'm breaking it down now? You already probably feel like you're gaining more clarity just as I'm breaking that down, right? Now you gotta understand, remember you're taking that trade, let's go back to the one hour. You're taking that trade on the one hour chart 
from somewhere like here, you put the 50 back on, you're taking it here and you're closing it. So 35, you're closing it at this support that you think is support 8.6, maybe a little bit more, maximum 9.2 as we said, right? Because it breaks back above the one hour 50. Area support. I could argue where you're closing the trades, we're scaling into the market. That's the difference. You're closing your trades down and we're adding to our trades. That's the difference. Already, even if you didn't add, if you didn't add, even just by knowing that it's, let's just say there's a 90% probability we was gonna to get to there. I'm not gonna go into all the details how because that takes time to learn. That's a, that's a whole course and a whole strategy for you to, to actually learn and absorb. You don't just learn that overnight. But let's say that you realized or you learned that there was a 90% probability that this would move to this low. What would that do for you? Well, you've got 16%, like I said. And what if you knew there was a potential to move a lot further, which we, you can see from our older webinars, this isn't something that we're talking about in hindsight, this is something we predict based off of pattern structures that just repeat themselves and have done from years and years from day one of trading. So when you look at it from that perspective, you look at the difference, 9.2, 16, right? You're already adding, you're already looking at extra 7% just by understanding basic pattern structure. So by not understanding patterns in your trading, you're doing yourself a disservice. You're losing out on percentage after percentage after percentage. How much better off would you be by understanding that? Just that one bit of knowledge, and we're just scratching the surface here, 16%. So now let's take it one step further and realize, well, that clearly wasn't significant, so we're gonna remove that support. And let's argue that this is a level that you would look at respect, you know, support, support maybe a little rejection here, just pierced through and went back through. You might even see it as a zone, right? That's what people do, they see this as a zone, which actually creates more gray areas than anything because a zone could be 100 pips and then it leaves so many people confused. We wanna be accurate. Remember, the fact that I can close my eyes, you know, and just, you know, I have to see the tool, and just pop it on like this, close my eyes and just put that on and then just find some rejections randomly in zones like this shows you that you shouldn't be betting your money on it. Right? You need to realize that when you're trading a lot more capital, you want to draw something that's accurate. Could I close my eyes and draw this, this channel? Could I close my eyes and get this? If I just started moving the trend line around, I'd probably get it something like this. Right, It's not accurate. So how can you rely on just closing your eyes, putting on a random resistance and support, actually going back and seeing, oh, it rejected here, 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 and there, and then place, placing your money on it. There's going to be more components to that. I understand it's not just as basic as that, but you need to realize on bigger capital, you're going to come into a lot of emotional issues. So again, going back to the structure, we've removed that. Then we've identified that we're targeting the low as a minimum. This is where you're closing. This is where we're adding because you would see that maybe there's some indecision in the market or something like that. Well, now let's take a look at it from that perspective. I've already shown you how just as a support and resistance based trader, you can already add more to percentage just by adding in a few patterns, right? You've not done anything else. You haven't thrown out of your knowledge. You, I'm not saying that you need to unlearn everything. I'm just saying that you're closing trades down too early due to putting too much emphasis on something that's not that important. And by understanding the patterns, it will help you. Now let's remove that and take a look at it from a Falcon perspective. So where do we get into the market? That's the key thing. We're not gonna go through the strategy. I'm just gonna give you areas of where we would enter. So we're entering two ways. Firstly, very tight and aggressive at the top, which is what we call a risk entry. And you know, there's criteria that needs to be met for you to know how to do that. But we'll be looking at a 25 pip stop. So firstly, just targeting this area here, just looking at this as an inflection point, there's already 12 to here. Now let's look at the area where you'd probably previously close it. So we're looking at 15.5, something around there, just from that first trade, right? Now let's extend it to where we're really looking at. That's 25%. Just by taking that first trade, this is a slightly more aggressive trade that we would take right at the top, but there's a reason for it. There's, there's a whole other pattern and structure leading up that justifies taking that. There's some counter shape formation. There's an even in star formation at the top of that structure as well, which gives it even more layers for this coming to the downside. But let's look at it from that perspective. We get our first trade. Let's say you took that 25%. That's the difference. So what you're saying is if you're only getting 9% and this is probably one of your biggest months, biggest trades, and you, you know, you're jumping around and dancing and doing star jumps, etc., when you're realizing that just by understanding the structure, this is 25, that's the difference. Now let's take it slightly more conservative. 
Let's say you don't get that entry. This is the key thing. It's not just the difference in returns. We, remember, we're still risking 1%. We're probably removing risk a lot quicker than what you are. But what you what you really need to realize, it's the amount of opportunities. Let's say if you didn't get this trade, this is the bigger question. If you didn't get this trade and it started to go, well, you wouldn't get this trade because you see that it's indecision. Would you get this trade? Definitely not. And would you get any of these trades? Probably not at all. So it's not really just the difference in percentages that I have an issue with. It's more so if that one trade that you don't get goes without you, you see it as if you've missed the run, for etc. for example. You see it as if you've missed the run, and guess what? You then get pissed off, you get frustrated, and then you start you know, taking other trades. You start taking trades that are not really there, and then you start losing money, then you go through a vicious circle, and then people start losing their accounts and all that kind of stuff. So. It's more to do with that, that you don't no longer, in Falcon, we don't just wait for that one trade and if we don't get it, then you know what, I waited all that time, I didn't get the trade, I was asleep, you get frustrated and then you start blaming these things, blaming your time zone, blaming this, blaming that, blaming your job and before you know it, you're never trading successfully. So you need to realize that as well. So that's the biggest difference. But now let's add from a more conservative approach. So point one, next entry. So this is our next entry with a slightly bigger stop, 45 pips on average this would be. And then, well, these are trades that we took, the trades that I took as well. So, looking for this, just targeting that low, 12%, and then 13.5. So, we look at that as an inflection point. So, even again there, just 13.5 on the second entry, if you didn't get the first one. If you got the first one, then you've got 25 plus 13. So, you can see the difference here. We're, very, we're getting very close to some high figures, and why you see some people in the Falcon community, you hear that they've hit these crazy returns, you're thinking, oh, maybe they must have risked a lot of money. No, we're just very accurate, and we understand how these price structures move. That's the difference. You can make a lot of percentage in one impulsive move if you understand these patterns and variations. This is why I've been talking about it for so long. This is why I push this. You know, I'm not doing this just because it's fun to say. I'm doing this because I want people to succeed and really make it happen. And I feel like this is holding people back. And there's only a small percentage of people that I personally know that do this, that do well at it. But they're, they're normally incorporating other things into their trading as well. Things like, you know, a few patterns here and there. And using all kinds of discretion from their experience in the market. So you need to realize that as well. It's not as just clean cut as support resistance, buy, sell, etc. There's a lot of moving parts to it. But as you can see, already adding from there. Let's move on to the next trade. And we're looking at this one here. Would you take this trade? Maybe, arguably, we could say that. We'd be looking at this trade here. I remember this one was 31 pips my stop was. And then we're looking at this low again. So that adds in another 15 to 16%. That's the next trade. So already we have one, two, three, four. We're four positions in. You're maybe waiting for one. If you don't get that trade, you miss the whole move and you're sitting on your hands. So you can already see the difference there. So that's the next trade. Now we have the next trade. Now this is a, a particular strategy that we would get on the one hour or the 15 minute on here. Again, 30 pips, particular move there that we won't go into, but that's another trade that we'll take. And then we've got another 11 to 12 percent as you can see and then this is the next one this is the big one two entries here actually so we have an entry here and we have an entry here this one's slightly messier i would agree but nevertheless it's still the entry so this is a very basic structure that we have right here this pattern that we've got following the continuation getting in here, and this was another one of my trades. This is a really great trade, I remember this one, which added another just under 7%, so 6.7. So what have you learned from here, with, apart from the crazy percentages that are here as well, is that you don't no longer have to have the fear of missing out. There's a reason why you don't really have people in Falcon having the fear of missing out, because of that, because you know there's multiple, multiple entries. And if you don't get one, then guess what? There's gonna be another one, and there's gonna be another one. And what does that create? It creates an abundance mindset, which is what you need in the market. Otherwise, you constantly be frustrated, constantly have this fear of missing out. That's why it happens. The fear of missing out comes from a lack of clarity. The fear of being wrong, that comes from having a massive ego in the market, right? You need to be neutral in the market. But as you can see from this way of trading, this is why we've had so much success and we'll continue to do so. There's so many other little variables of understanding how to take these trades, you know, because you're just seeing it as price. There's patterns here, very clean patterns. And I mean, even this one, as you can see here, I can, I can just literally take this 
price from here, stretch that, and you can see that this is just a larger version of that. This is just a larger version of this move to the downside. So this particular pattern, we expect this to repeat itself because of the previous pattern. And then there's a running channel here, which we won't go into too much detail, but there's a reason why we expected this to go to the downside, right? So very, very important lessons here. I hope you can see from a percentage perspective. I mean, we're talking about potentially 50 to 60% from here to here versus nine to 10%, maybe 12% at best trading a support and resistance based style. And if you didn't get that first trade, then guess what? Maybe you got nothing or a break even, or maybe a couple of percent of closing it due to you know fear of missing out and things like that. So what you need to realize is that, will we get every single trade? Did I get every single trade to the way to the downside? No, of course I didn't, right? I got three of those trades, but knowing that there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then of course we can go into a lot more of those, but let's say seven. So we've got seven opportunities versus one opportunity. Which one would you rather pick? That's the question that I'm asking people for that big reason. This is why I've gone into a bit more detail from the request from the demand, because I can understand, you know, part one may have been slightly even vague to you because you didn't understand the true power of the percentages, but you've got pretty much 50 to 60% versus nine to 10%. It's a very big difference. And forget the percentages for now. Don't think about the percentages. Think about the fact that you've got seven opportunities versus one opportunity or no opportunities if you miss the first one and then start taking average trades. That's the big difference. And that's what can change your trading. That's the difference between an inconsistent trader and a consistent trader. I see it all the time. People that can read good price, good at price structure. They're great traders. They pick the direction beautifully, right? They can, they, you probably did. You might even be a trader that did predict this move, but didn't know how to make money of that out of it because you didn't have a criteria to get back in if it didn't meet your strict rules. Now, you should always have rules in the market, I agree with, but you need to be flexible with that. You need to be flexible to an extent, 80-20. You need to understand when to apply discretion. You need to understand when to put your foot on the gas, put it that way in the markets, and really take advantage of these moves. Remember, in impulsive legs like this, the market doesn't tend to pull back very deeply. So if your you know, strategy and methods are predicated on deeper pullbacks and they don't happen, guess what? You're always gonna be waiting for them to pull back to the last support, for example. Let's say this had a support here, you're waiting for this to become resistance, to pull back and then drop, and then guess what? It doesn't pull back, it just keeps dropping and you don't take advantage of them and that's where the fear, this is why so many psychological issues happen with people. Just look at the fact, I don't know why no one's talking about this, 90% of people in the market trade support and resistance. What's the statistic of people failing? 90%. Is there a correlation there? So what you're saying is only 10% of people in the market that are actually successful, how do they trade? That's the question you wanna be asking yourselves. And you know, I, I have friends and traders that trade this type of style and actually do reasonably okay. They do, they do great. You know, some of them even average upwards to between seven to 10% per month, right? Could they bank a lot more percentage of course they could. There's a reason why people that are already consistent banking these kind of returns come into Falcon and start pretty much doubling their returns. That happens on a consistent basis, why? Because they're good at reading price structure, they see trades like this, they close them down here, and when they come into Falcon, they understand how to close them down here or close them down a lot, for, a lot further down. So as you can see, we wouldn't worry about that. And I mean, would you trade through the daily 50? That's the question you wanna ask yourself. Is there any more support there? You might have tons on here. I mean, let me know in the comments how you kind of construct your charts. I would, I would love to know, by the way, if you you know have more things like different indicators, you know, let me know how you, you might even use RSI. Let me know if you use that as well. I'd be keen to know. So many people use these different indicators and I feel like if you're relying on indicators, remember they're lagging and they're holding you back. The best thing you can do is study price, see it for what it is and realize there's so much more in the market for you to take advantage of. I mean, even just looking back at things like what I previously had here, look at that. Isn't it a coincidence that if you had that resistance there, look at that break, look at that. If I just replay that to there, is that not a significant break? Would you not consider that a break, a solid break that's gonna come back down, maybe retest and go long? Well, I'm expecting this to come to the downside and break back down for various reasons that I've covered today. So I hope these lessons taught you a lot because this is a lot of valuable lessons. I've never done anything like this on YouTube. Now. You might be thinking, oh, can I understand the full strategy now? 
Not at all. It takes a long, lo a lot longer to understand something like that. You can't just understand one pattern and think you know how to trade it. There's risk management. There's psychology. There's you know understanding how to deal with hesitation. Understanding the different variations of corrections. You learn a lot from your corrections, not your big moves down. That's just impulses. You need to realize that once you understand these variations, your level of skill will just skyrocket. It will go through the roof, and then you'll start capitalizing on these moves to the downside like this. And as you can see, we've already filled a lot of the move. This could still go to the downside, but longer term now, we're seeing this as a particular pattern. That we're expecting this to move to the upside as well. So we'd probably expect this to move a little bit higher before we get some sort of rejections. But overall, we've got some great conditions that we're stepping into. And for a lot of, a lot of the questions as well, just a quick answer to those. So a lot of you asking, you know, is the transition easy? Is it difficult? You need to really ask yourself, when you learn something new, the mindset that you have to have is not, is it easy, is it difficult? You just need to realize, if you're seeing the difference in percentages, why does it matter if it was hard? Not saying it's hard, but what if it was hard? You know, it's, you've got to have the right mindset. If you want to be a successful trader, it doesn't matter. You shouldn't be asking, is it easy? You shouldn't be searching for, is it easy? Because nothing easy is going to get you good results. So yes, it can take you a little bit of time. It's different for everybody. I've seen people come into Falcon within three months, absolutely smash it out of the water and get great results. I've seen people that have been there for a whole year and still not get any results, still be in the minus. Why is that? Because everybody learns at their own pace. But if you come in with the right mindset that you actually wanna be a great trader, then the ratio of people in Falcon, that speaks volumes, not to mention our supportive community. The transition can be as smooth as you like. And you know it doesn't really take you that long. You, you think that you hold a lot of emphasis on things like support and resistance and EMAs, that soon goes away very quickly. And I've seen it in the community time and time again. Very, very easy to switch. But again, coming with the right mindset, not just because your other strategy is failing, come in because you've actually resonated with this and that you see, right, this is how I can see myself trading. Not just because maybe you're not getting results somewhere else. That's not a good mindset to just keep chopping and changing. But if you feel like you're always you know, cutting your trade short and things like this, and this resonated with you, then of course, we'd love to have you. We're a growing community and we're here to spread the word and create as many traders, great traders as possible. So guys and girls, I really hope you enjoyed this episode. Let me know in the comments what your number one takeaway is. I would love to know that. And again, I look forward to bringing you more from a technical side so you can really see why we're seeing the growth that we are seeing in the community. Again, I appreciate all the kind words, all the comments, and I cannot wait to catch up with you all soon. Have a great weekend.